humble VHS copy of Superman 3 is where this story begins. You see, as a young child, there was a scene in the movie that scared rivers of filth for me and gave me nightmares for years to come. And that's the scene where Annie Ross's character gets sucked into the 80s mega computer and turned into a murderous cyborg. Watching someone get their humanity control alt deleted by a computer to be used as a tool by them was a new concept to me and unlocked a whole new plethora of nightmares I never knew I had. And then came the 2000s and eventually VHS tapes were phased out, forgotten about and chucked in the ocean like everything else to make room for the World Wide Web. A revolutionary new invention designed to help us share information but more commonly used to blast uncensored grot directly into our homes. Nice job team. But it was also a time to discover new and exciting media, and this was when I first became exposed to the movie Tensuro 2 Body Hammer, an industrial fever dream of a movie about a guy who starts turning into a machine. And even after having exposed myself to some of the worst things the internet has to offer, every day, bro. the robot transformations in this movie still give me the willies. Of course, GW no slouch when it comes to this kind of body horror either. Much like a decent PC setup, when you look behind any space marine, you'll find they're really just a mess of wires and they're little more than just genetically enhanced sausage meat inside an armor casing. Servitors are what happens when the sausage meat is the casing and they're some of the most unfortunate bastards in the whole of the 40k universe. Lobotomized prisoners left with just enough brain function to perform menial tasks and live in indentured servitude to the Imperium. The GW servitors are all presented wearing this kind of onesie suit which to me makes them look like big toddlers, hides all the gory stuff within and kind of betrays their sinister backstories. But that's not what I want from my servitors. I don't want them to be all tucked away in a onesie. I want them to give me that same body horror feel I got from Superman 3 or Tensuro. So the next step is to go over to my ideas wall and have a little bit of a think about what I can do to make some body horror servitors. First thing I want is for them to look like they're experiencing horrible pain. Like all this stuff grafted onto them is still causing them terrible agony. I know the GW ones don't exactly look comfortable, but their design originates from the 80s and we've all got a lot more fucked up and been exposed to a lot more weird shit since then. And I think we can amp that up a bit in our new sculpt. I also want to show that this person's life was so meaningless to the Imperium that they snatched his soul and lobotomized him basically just to perform the actions of being a toaster or something lame like that. This is a triptych. It's basically a three-piece portable altar that unfolds and Catholics used to use to worship on the go or in places where their faith was banned. And it seems like the perfect religious trinket to be bought into the 41st millennia. Why have a small fold-out altar when you can have a massive marble statue in service of the emperor and carried by a lobotomized prisoner? Who needs pockets after all? So now our servitor has a function, we need to get our prisoner ready for the job. And first things first, we can get rid of some of these extraneous limbs. He's definitely not going to need his arms, and his legs could probably do with a bit of beefing up if he's going to carry a lot of stuff. So I opened up ZBrush and just started sort of messing around really. I wanted there to be a lot of exposed flesh so that you can see all the gory inside bits. I don't really work from drawings, but I do keep a sketchbook, largely just with kind of ideas that I pulled together in ZBrush. And sometimes it's more of just an idea, like for instance I wanted this servitor to look massively over encumbered, struggling against the load that it has on its back, tiny and small and lost amongst a sea of wires and robotics. I ended up with something a bit like this and thought I'd give it a bit of a test print to see how I was doing. The results were okay and definitely had some potential, but I felt this little servitor wasn't carrying enough. This boy has more to give and maybe there's some other fun interesting ways he can serve the Emperor. Then I figured maybe our boy could carry a whole priest in a pulpit so that he can shout at his parishioners on the battlefield. I knocked up a quick test print of it and really liked where it was going, so I put the statue idea on hold for a little bit whilst I worked on the priest and the pulpit. I started by just improving on the pulpit and making a bit of a test priest to go in there as well as a couple of other little knickknacks. Eventually I was left with something that looked like this. I'd put a bit of stank on the pose so he was leaning over, struggling a little bit to walk, a few knickknacks here and there, including one of these megaphones. Now, I'd been toying with putting these megaphones in throughout the design process and eventually figured to myself, why have a couple of megaphones scattered about when I could make a feature of them and have one kind of gigantic mega megaphone? <laughs> I immediately started work on a kind of speaker headdress as well as flipping the direction the priest was facing to give the model a bit more stability and stop it falling over. 
And although I do like this version of the priest, the headdress was kind of giving me the wrong vibes. It was a little bit more Art Nouveau than it was the classic Warhammer Gothic style. Now, you might be thinking it's crazy to get so hung up on this kind of what style a headdress is or something like that. But you've got to remember, you have very limited real estate on these models to tell their story and what they're like. And I want this priest to be full on religious nutter, so I want him to be rocking the Gothic. This is what I ended up with, and although it's not as ostentatious as the last one I showed you, it reads better on the model and adds to the sum of its parts. So with all that stuff sorted out, the priest was basically complete, ready to roam the battlefield and shout at people, all from the comfort of his servitor mobility scooter. I even made the model so you can print it without the priest and put whatever you want up in that pulpit. But what of the statue man and his triptych payload? Now it improved on the carrying servitor quite a lot, maybe it was time to revisit that idea. With the servitor much improved, this was basically just a case of working on the statue and the housing for it. I also made the statue and the housing so you can print them separately and use them as scenery or something like that. I also figured at this stage I might as well make a copy that has a massive gun, just in case somebody, heaven forbid, would want to use it in an actual game of Warhammer. Now I had my three flavours of struggling servitor, I felt like I needed to make them some mates to go with them and complete the kit. First I thought we'd start with the priest character, and before we can get into what kind of company he keeps, I think we need to just quickly work out what makes this priest guy tick. To me I think it's safe to say that if you've risen through the hierarchy of the Ecclesiarch in Warhammer 40,000, you're probably someone that considers yourself holier than thou, but in reality you're probably just a massive cunt. I love you. So I reckon the priest probably hangs out with jumped up thugs to do his bidding and are way more into the violence than the religious stuff. So I found some reference for these penitent hoods which look cool and spooky and religious-y but also give off a Ku Klux Klan feeling which really helps with the religious thug vibe. I wanted to represent how cruel and violent these thugs were with the weapons they had and for me nothing is crueler than bringing a dog to the battlefield. Dogs are often used for sniffing out hidden opponents or chasing down fleeing ones and represent a real cruelty, a bully mentality where you're picking on the people that aren't really there to fight at all. It's the perfect weapon to display what a massive arsehole you really are. So I brought these ideas into ZBrush and started tossing about just making some very simple kind of religious -y robes and adding the penitent hat and the dog. I ended up with something that looked like this and I was pretty pleased with him but I wanted to make him just that little bit crueler so I made a version that has a massive club as well because nothing is worse than being chased down by a dog and then beaten to death with a big stick. The third and final guy to round off this religious trio basically used the same design concepts as the first one but I gave him a bit more of what you'd call a standard loadout giving him the classic bolt gun just in case some madman did want to proxy him as a Warhammer character. Which is definitely something I'm not advocating for. So with our third man done, we had our first trio of models ready to go. And I was pretty happy with them, I felt they gave off that religious thug vibe that I was going for. They're coming to convert you to the word of the Emperor or kick the shit out of you, it's your choice. I kick ass for the Lord! Next up was the task of making some buddies for our old friend Statue Triptych Man. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I found this part really difficult. Several models I began and then abandoned because I didn't quite like the way they were coming out. I just couldn't quite get something that I felt fit with what was going on with this triptych guy. I kind of felt like this wandering statue would need some protectors, some kind of curators of the arts almost. In the end, this was my best attempt. And although I felt like it had some potential, it was just a still a little bit too weird. So I decided to go back to the old ideas wall and have a little bit of a think about what role these guys actually serve. I wanted to try to focus on my original ideas of having a guy both in excruciating pain whilst also accomplishing a very menial task. As servitors often start as standard members of the Imperium like you and me would be, I wanted to try to pull on the most mundane, boring tasks that we're subjected to today and amp them up to a 40k scale. This is a multi-purpose letter sorting machine, or as it used to be known, a ZMT machine. It can sort up to 60 letters per minute with the help of an operator. It's been described by some of the people that have worked on it over the years as one of the most mind-numbingly boring jobs in all of existence. Hours upon hours of excruciatingly boring labour that requires just enough concentration for you to stay engaged the entire time. Some people have even gone as far as linking this machine to the unexplained series of murderous rampages that postal workers went on in the late 80s and early 90s. And to me it seems that this mind-breaking monotony is maybe one of the closest things we have in modern day age to being a real-life servitor. 
So I went back to ZBrush with this in mind. My goal not necessarily to make something ready for war, but someone who was more of an administrational role on the battlefield. Acting almost as a glorified dictaphone, his role would be as a note taker, endlessly writing of the great deeds of the Imperium, each stroke of the quill causing him more and more pain. Eventually I ended up with this. He's got two extra faces stitched onto his own to give him a better view of the battlefield, and of course, his cyber quill protruding from his chest. For the next model, I wanted to revisit that art curator guy I'd abandoned earlier. There was lots I liked about this model. I thought the body was pretty good and the pose and stuff like that was okay, but I definitely needed to change the head and what he was carrying and doing. In the end, I decided to combine the servitor with some of the megaphone ideas I'd had in the past and create this kind of half servitor robot man that's using his own head as a kind of a loudspeaker. So with that model complete, our servitor had his two mates and was ready to hit the battlefield. Or was he? You see, at this point in the video, I had been working on these models for months, and although I was pretty pleased with the priest and his retinue of thugs, I still felt this statue guy wasn't that cohesive, like maybe he needed another model or something just to help him out a bit. But, you know, I mean, at this point I was starting to feel like a bit of a servitor myself, just banging my head against the same old problem again and again and again and again. Success in any endeavour depends on the degree to which it is an expression of your true self. Or so said some guy called Rolf Masterson. And it can be the case when locked away trying to learn something new, whether that be model making, drawing or fucking Morris dancing, whatever it is, you can lose that sense of self-expression, become frustrated and lean on the tried and tested, the standard or expected. But that shit's best left to the AI chatbots these days. The point in learning something new is not to mindlessly plug away at it, like a brain-dead servitor plumbed into the 40k's equivalent of a multi-purpose letter-sorting machine, but to free yourself from that, through the avenues of expression it opens up to you. You will hit these walls, but don't give up. Never give up. You will fail. You will feel the crushing disappointment of pouring yourself into something completely just to see it crumble to nothing. But you will try again, and you will get better and eventually you will work it out. Take breaks. Try something new. Don't give up. Like trying to peel a bastard of an orange, you chip away at it, small chunk by small chunk, until you see what's inside. If you're not feeling something, put it down. Walk away for a bit. But come back and keep trying. Do you remember that band, Scouting for Girls? She's so lovely. Those guys couldn't sing. They couldn't play their instruments, they looked like shit and rumour has it was they smelt like ham farts. But their single, She's So Lovely, sold over a million copies. A sculpture is nothing but a series of tiny cuts. And inspiration can strike at any time, so just keep at it. I mean, imagine how shit scouting for girls would have been if they had just given up. So take a page out of Rolf Masterson's book and find yourself in your endeavours. Then, after months of fucking around on ZBrush, I had all the models done. The two sets of servitors and their buddies, plus the book guy and the gun variation meant there was a total of eight models in this kit and they can mostly be printed in parts, in case you're one of those people that likes to paint stuff separately. So there we have it, my horror servitors, done, finished, ready to go, ready to be picked up for a very reasonable price on Colts 3D. Thanks for watching the video, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time.